President Obama won a convincing victory, uh, so of course, uh, what are the Democrats going to do? They are going to immediately give away the Queen. Now, this is not what uh, the Republicans do. Uh, of course, uh, you remember that Bush had won 286 uh, electoral votes back in 2004. President Obama, this time around, is likely to win 332 votes. Uh, it's a huge difference. Obama has a much larger mandate. Uh, but here was Bush's reaction after the 2004 election. I earned capital in the campaign, political capital, and now I intend to spend it. I intend to spend it, treat it as a mandate, and then of course the press fell in line, started talking about a non-existent mandate. Now, uh, this time around, of course, the press is not doing that. There was a new uh, headline out saying, elections 50-50. Even after we have won the election, uh, nonetheless, it's the Associated Press that says a headline, quote, it's a 50-50 nation, give or take. You know, somebody was joking around, hey, is CNN going to call this even right after the election anyway? Apparently, at least the Associated Press does. So when Republicans win, uh, even if it's a squeaker, mandate, mandate. When Democrats win, no, it's 50-50, right? But it's the Democrats' fault, because that's what they said. Now, first, let me give you a part of President Obama's victory speech here, uh, and this is where he reaches out to Republicans. Tonight, you voted for action, not politics as usual. And in the coming weeks and months, I am looking forward to reaching out and working with leaders of both parties to meet the challenges we can only solve together. Reducing our deficit, reforming our tax code, fixing our immigration system, freeing ourselves from foreign oil. We've got more work to do. Now, look, it's his victory speech. He's going to reach out, of course, to the other side. If it was just that, oh, there's no problem at all in that. But you knew it wasn't going to be just that. That's because you watched the Young Turks. So here comes Axelrod, his top advisor, and listen to what he's going to say about a mandate. On this issue of particularly the fiscal cliff, you know, one thing, you know, people, presidents always say, well, I, have a, I had a mandate, I had a mandate. That's a, that's a foolish word and it's generally untrue. Why would you say that? Why would you give away your leverage? You have the mandate. And here is a typical clown Democrat. Oh, mandate? I don't have a mandate. That would be a foolish thing to say. Uh. But it's not just that he's stupid. It's that he doesn't want to win. He doesn't want to win. Because when it comes to politics, of course he wants to win. And look at the campaign they ran. They ran a great campaign, a tough campaign. But on the policy, his job is to lose. He's going to do the grand bargain. He's going to give him the corporate tax cuts. He's going to cut Medicare. He's going to cut Medicaid. So in order to help him do that, he now says, oh, well, we didn't have a mandate anyway. Immediately, he turns around and says, the Republicans have the leverage. This is sick, man. So then here comes Biden. The vice president is going to talk about a mandate. It sounds good in the beginning. Listen to him. He says, from what it appears is that on the issue of the tax issue, there was a clear, a clear sort of mandate about people coming much closer to our view about how to deal with tax policy. Hey, that sounds really good. There you go. 60% of the American people said, raise taxes in exit polls. Raise taxes, 60% besides which they elected you. So Biden's talking about raising taxes, right? Wrong. He then went on to talk about corporate taxes. In fact, Sam Stein from Huffington Post explains, Biden said he thought corporate tax reform may come quickly as both parties agree that lowering the overall rate while closing loopholes and ending reductions constitutes common sense reform. You didn't see that wrong. They're not going to raise taxes on corporations, they're going to lower taxes on corporations. Because it's not like we bothered to work really hard to get them elected so they would do what they said. They were, of course not. No, but now, to be fair to President Obama, and I want to skip ahead to video 22 here. He's been saying this all along, and I've been screaming from the rooftops, I've been telling you guys. He's going to lower corporate taxes and other progressives and MSNBC, etc. Oh, no, you're being ridiculous. He wouldn't do that. He just ran a whole campaign on raising taxes, right? But you weren't listening. Here's what President Obama said in his 2011 State of the Union. So tonight I'm asking Democrats and Republicans to simplify the system. Get rid of the loopholes. Level the playing field and use the savings to lower the corporate tax rate for the first time in 25 years without adding to our deficit. 
lower the corporate tax rate. You didn't hear them wrong. In fact, they've actually put out a memo saying that they hope to lower the corporate tax rate from 35% to 28%. This nonsense about closing loopholes and stuff. There's two po problems that number one, you close the loopholes, some of them, not all of them for a little while. And then guess what happens? They come right back in and then at a lower rate. And second of all, wait a minute, I thought you want to do deficit reduction. If you want to do deficit reduction, why are you doing this revenue neutral? Why are you lowering rates instead of increasing rates? Because you don't care about reducing the deficit. Obama doesn't care, and of course the Republicans don't care. All they care about is lower the taxes, help the rich and the powerful, screw over the middle class. And the vehicle by which they are going to do that is called the grand bargain. They do huff and puff, and, oh my God, we got a fiscal cliff, we got a fiscal cliff. You don't understand. We've got to do a grand bargain to f fix the fiscal cliff. So what's the fiscal cliff? Well, we're going to cut spending. There's a sequester that's uh, happening. Cut $1.2 trillion in, from the deficit, right? Uh, and half of it comes from defense, half of it comes from discretionary spending, middle class, et cetera, right? Okay, well, wow, that's a, well, we got to stop that, right? But do you know that in the grand bargain, the amount of defense, uh, I'm sorry, the amount of spending cuts is three to one to increasing taxes, okay? So that, and it's a $4 trillion deal. You know what that means? That means they would actually do $3 trillion worth of spending cuts, nearly three times as many. Now, how does that help progressives? But it gets worse. Instead of taking half of them from defense, they wouldn't take them from defense. They take all of them from the middle class and the poor. That doesn't help progressives. That is horrible for progressives. They would cut Medicare, they would cut Medicaid, they might even cut Social Security. They're gonna do it. The other part of the fiscal cliff is, oh my God, if we don't do anything, well then the Bush tax cuts will go away and taxes will increase. Exactly, that's what we voted for. So don't do anything. But of course, in reality, they're not gonna raise taxes on the rich. <laughs> you think they're gonna do that? No. So here comes Bill Burton, another, the guy who ran Obama's super PAC, the one that was inside the White House. Are you going to do the grand bargain? Oh, hell yeah. Watch this. And I think that coming back from this election, he can sit down with John Boehner and Harry Reid and say, look, we just, have an election. we just had an election. We've got an opportunity to, to sit down and really work out what's going to happen before this fiscal cliff and do a big grand bargain. A big grand bargain. That big grand screwing is coming our way. And here comes Axelrod talking about, oh, we can't wait to work with the Republicans. You know, we want the doors to be open and we want people to walk through both ways. And that's what we're going to need. But there's no, look, I've known Barack Obama for 20 years. Uh, I watched him in the Illinois uh, State Senate. I watched him in the United States Senate. And I, and I worked by his side uh, in the White House. I don't know anybody who uh, is uh, more willing to work with people um, uh, uh, from whatever political party and whatever uh, background and whatever persuasion in order to move things forward. And I know that he's going to bring that spirit uh, to this as, uh, as we deal with this and other issues. And Just give it away. Give away everything that people thought they were voting for. At least we told you here on the Young Turks, don't get excited. You know, Romney is an unacceptable option. Hold your nose and vote for Obama, but he ain't going to do what he says he's going to do. <laughs> and here it comes. So, and here, let me skip ahead to uh, video number 21 here. Because now that the Democrats have made it abundantly clear, even though they won, they will give up anyway, and they will give the Republicans what they want. John Boehner says, well, if you're going to give me the queen, I'll take it. Here he is with Diane Sawyer. Raising taxes on small business people uh, is the wrong prescription given where our economy is. And because when you look at uh, the president's proposal, half of the people uh, who would get hit with higher taxes uh, file their taxes as individuals, but their is business it on, taxes. But is it on the table to talk about? Because it, he campaigned it, on it. Sixty percent of the voters have said that they are ready to raise these taxes. They are ready to I have the wealthier Americans pitch in here. I made clear yesterday that raising tax rates uh, is unacceptable. Unacceptable. If I was him, I'd do the same thing. Like, look, even though I just got my ass handed to me, this guy's handing it back. Like, <laughs> he says, here, take it back and take my ass while you're at it. And I'm like, all right, I guess so. So that grand bargain is a 
disaster for progressives. They're going to cut all that spending. They're going to give the money back to the defense contractors. They're going to cut corporate taxes. And I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't cut ta if they cut taxes for the rich. And they will give you some BS thing about, oh, we took away some exemptions and loopholes. And whatever exemptions they take away, I guarantee you right now, will hit the middle class, like home mortgage deductions, charitable deductions, etc. If they take those away, that's going to hit you 10 times harder, because it's a much bigger percentage of your income than it hits the rich. So Democrats win, Republicans win. It doesn't matter. It, and politicians, whatever they say, it doesn't matter. In the end, money rules politics anyway. The rich and the powerful win no matter what. The only question in this election was by how much.